Hello, floss tube. This is episode three of my floss tube. This is Laura from the Slovak Farm. I feel like my camera angle is really weird today. Sorry if it is. I was trying to make sure you weren't looking at my nose because that's not fun to watch. But I just feel like I can't get it right today. So, how is everybody today? Hope if you went to StitchCon, you had a blast. Um, I've seen a few photos. It looks like everybody had a really good time. I actually didn't know about StitchCon. It's funny. I didn't know about StitchCon until probably about a month, a month and a half ago. And I live in Ohio. And it's in Cincinnati. Very close to, like, an hour. Like, it's like, okay, not like an hour. It's really close to my brother. It's really close. That's what I was going to say. It's really close to my brother. Um, it's like a four-hour drive for me. I probably could have went. So I have two. I'm going to see next year, maybe. I like going to my retreat in Pennsylvania because I have a lot of, I've made a lot of friends over the couple of years that we've gone and having been involved in the group that does that. So what has been going on this week? Holy crap on a cracker. I have been busy. I had to work late most of last week. My boss was on vacation. My boss was on vacation. Her boss was like, Laura, I need you to stay until I get there or until so-and-so gets back. Well, so-and-so didn't get back, you know, get back from their lunch break. So-and-so doesn't get back from their lunch break until like 2.30 in the afternoon. I am supposed to leave. 2.15 is my eight hour shift. I start at 6.15 in the morning. I crank on straight on through. 2.15 is my eight hour shift. Um, most days I am not there until 2.15. I'm only there until about 1, maybe 1.30 on a rare occasion. I was there until after 2 o'clock. Monday it was um, like 2.45. Last Monday it was like 2.45. This is Tuesday, June 26th. It's going to go up, this video will go up on the 27th because of my filming and uploading drama. But, uh, so last Monday she was there, didn't get there until after I had left at 2.45. Tuesday she was semi-early, it was like 1.15. Um, and then Wednesday and Thursday it was like 2 o'clock. Friday she actually called at like 1 and I talked to her for a little bit. And I left at like 1.30 because she's like, well, you can just go ahead and go if everybody's settled. And I'm like, yeah, thanks. It's a lot. So I have been really busy. Between that, I had to make some stuff for my business, which meant running down there in the middle of last week to get it. Um, it's a little bit challenging because normally I go to Wellington once a week during the week, during the school year. Summer, not doing that right now. So I was actually just down there today off Gallivant in the countryside. <laughs> it's a whole other story entirely. <laughs> um, I had a good time today. I went down to there, picked up my supplies. I went and sat and spent half an hour with my grandfather. Um, my, my Grandpa's the only grandparents. My grandpa that I went and visited today is the only grandparent that I have left that's living. My grandma, his wife, just passed away at the end of March. And I haven't really had time to go see him much. And I've been feeling really guilty. So I went and spent some time with him today. I was like, look, if I get floss tube filmed, I get floss tube filmed. If I don't, I don't. I wanted to spend, I had a blast talking to my grandpa and Leah, learning stories about my family that I didn't know. Holy crap, my family is crazy. <laughs> so it's been a really busy week. All kinds of stress at the end of last week because I was worried about rain because of the farmer's market. I was so worried it was going to rain. Woke up Saturday morning. It's not supposed to rain. We get there. I have the most epic backing par parking job of my life. Like, it was amazing. My cat just said hello, if you heard that. Yeah, sorry about that. I had the most epic parking job. So, like, they're angled in spaces, and there's, like, space, the parking spaces, the parking spaces, and the way you drive through. Parking spaces are angled, so you go in this way. I decided to back in. They're not really designed to be backed into. There's not really space to back in. I'm like, I'm going to have to try this again. First shot. I was proud of myself. <laughs> But as soon as we started unpacking, it started raining. Oh, that was great. 
And I sell bath bombs and soap, stuff that really probably shouldn't get wet. Especially with bath bombs. <coughs> um, so, we got rained on. Got a little wet. It did sunny up. Which is good. Um, we ended up having a pretty decent market. Which all of us were pretty thankful for. Because they were supposed to have an event out there. My cat is chewing on something down there. They're supposed to have an event out there called Chalk Walk that um, you can go draw on the city sidewalks and stuff. It's a really nice event. Well, they moved it because of the weather and we were all a little concerned that um, market was not going to fare well. But I think everybody did pretty good. Then I came home from that. I had a graduation party <coughs> that I spent most of the evening at. Um, then Sunday, yeah, Sunday, had my church, my parish picnic at my church. Spent all afternoon out there, but I had a really good time. I really enjoy my parish. I really enjoy the people, even though I'm one of the few young people that is there. Um, had a good time. Monday, not much happened. So I get to get some mail. Monday, not much happened. Today, I was out gallivanting in the countryside, getting supplies, visiting with my grandpa. So that's been my week. It's been busy. It's going to be another really busy week. Um, I'm hoping not maybe as busy with work, but we have a picnic on Saturday. I guess we're not really doing much on Sunday. I fully intend to film a floss tube video on the 3rd and post it on the 4th, um, just because I should have that time because of the way my job works. So, no reason not to, right? Um, I won't share with you, you know, my fireworks experience. My fireworks experience kind of sucks, let me tell you. Because I get fireworks all year long, all summer long. Sometimes even in the middle of winter, because people in this city are crazy. It's my soapbox moment for the day. I actually was gonna have a soapbox moment, soapbox moment about people who drive on country roads around farm tractors after my drive to Wellington, because, you know, Wellington is a small town, one of those small towns where a traffic jam is three cars behind a farm implement. People don't understand how to drive around farm implements. But I'm better now about that. So, but we do get a lot of fireworks, people shooting off fireworks around here. It is really obnoxious. It induces panic attacks in me. Not to mention disrupts my sleep. Summer is rough around here. Getting a house with air conditioning so I can keep my windows closed during the summer. That's my plan. So, I got some mail this week. My friend Victoria and her daughter, Audrey, are were visiting Canada. They went to Niagara Falls. They sent me this cute little postcard. How adorbs. How beautiful. I've been to Niagara Falls. It is gorgeous. I love it there. So that is going on. Probably on my... I have a message board. I will show you one of these days that I made them. Probably I'll put this on that. So that's really cool. And then I got an Amazon order because I ordered some stuff off of Amazon. I ordered some pen blades. Pen blades. These are really cool. There's three of them on the set. It probably helps if I hold it up so you can see the whole thing, not me just standing here. Yeah. So you push it up. You get a blade. When you're done with it, you push the button and it goes back down. It's really cool. It's going to be great for my paper crafting. I've got, as you can see, this pile of cardboard, this giant piece of cardboard that's behind me. It's like on the floor. I'm sitting in a chair. That's how tall it is. Um, I actually have to cut it up to make photo albums for my kids at work for their Christmas presents for their parents. But I have three different style of blades and the really cool thing that I just figured out about these, like I'm a little slow on the uptake sometimes, is there's a slit in there so I can trim. So in a pinch, probably, maybe, I mean, this would be something to actually pack in my stitchy bag to cut thread. This might be better than taking scissors around with me. I'm gonna mess around with that and see how that works out. 
a little aggravated when I got the package though, because this is how they came. They were in this plastic baggie here, and the blister pack was like already open. I'm like, did somebody open my stuff? Is something wrong with my stuff? But they seem to be in good shape. They are sharp. They are cutting. I tested them because I was going to get on Amazon if they didn't. So I got that. Then I got craft tweezers. And I got the reverse tweezers. You push them to open and when they're closed, they stay closed. To hold things. This guy, I'll show you the packaging. I suppose I could link everything I got if you want to buy it. I can link these two things. Um, these are more for paper crafting stuff, but I'm sure they will have stitchy applications. I was using a pair of tweezers that I have buried on my desk. I was using a pair of beauty tweezers for my tweezers. So you know, these don't stay closed. So you, when you want them closed, you have to sit there and hold them. That can be a little bit tedious, but. I'm sure I will find cross-stitch applications for these because I own nothing that is a unitasker. Nothing. Not even the fire extinguisher is a unitasker. Home defense. Hello. I'm putting my, my stuff back. And then I also got this. I got a diamond painting kit. I fully and wholeheartedly blame Danielle over at Stitcherista for this. Not that she watches my videos. It'd be cool if she did though. But the reason I picked this one out is because of that. It is the rose from Beauty and the Beast. I pulled this apart and was looking at it. <clears throat> this will be an adventure. I'm not entirely happy with the diamonds. They're round diamonds. A lot of diamond painters use square diamonds. But, um, Danielle is actually doing a heaven and earth design in diamond painting. I've been very interested watching that process because I have a heaven and earth design I really, really, really like that I really, really want done. I own the pat, I bought the pattern. I really want to do it, but I can't stitch a heaven and earth design. Like I just don't have, I don't know if I want to say the attention span. Or what? Because it's not hard to stitch. They're not hard to stitch because it's all full stitches. There's no back stitch. It is a lot of confetti, but that doesn't bother me. I just, I started it and I got like one page in and I'm like, hooey, I can't not do this. I don't, I ain't got it for all that. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so that's my mail this week. Good times. Last night, I fought with a card. This card, it's a nice card. It opens up this way. And it's meant to sit like this. But the video, but the Pinterest instructions were pretty sketchy. So um, I have decided that I'm going to divide my channel sort of three things. My floss tube videos, my paper scrap videos. That's what I'm calling it for all of my paper crafting. I'm calling it the paper scraps. That's what I'm calling it. I have just determined this. And then the DIY nether. This is the DIY nether. So the DIY nether, anything sort of that doesn't fall into paper crafting or cross stitching, but I'm going to a wedding in about a month and I wanted to get the card. Yes, I realized I made the card a month in advance. That's how I roll. I've had a picture album that's their present done for two months. Maybe not two months, like a month and a half. And that's how I roll. I like to get things done early. So if I have any hiccups, it gets done. So let me show you what I'm working on. I did not grab any finishes. Oh crap. I thought I was going to have a fully finished project object for you today. I don't. I'll tell you about that when I get to it. So here is Cinderella. I changed, I moved the Q-snap because it was getting a little tedious with the way it was in the frame with the dress on the, you know, with the dress this way. 
And I really only have to work on sort of this section, so I thought this would be a little bit easier, and it is. Um, I contemplated actually putting it on my square frame. I just didn't. I don't remember where I put the bars. Actually, I think I remember where I put the bars. I'm just lazy, and I didn't. So, <laughs> let's put the picture up the right way, Laura. This is my life. This is my everyday life. If you are my friend, you know how this is. If you are not my personal friend, ask them. This is how it rolls. <laughs> this is the fully finished Cinderella. What she'll look like when she's done. Here's my progress. I did get all the white down here done. I told you I didn't get a lot of stitching done at home last week. But I did get all the little white flowers done. And if you're in the Stitch Mania group, and actually I think I put this in one of my other cross stitch groups I'm in. You will know. That's somewhere down in here. I can't point, I can't tell you right now. After I got all the blue done, I realized. And all the white done, I realized I had missed like two stitches. That were supposed to be blue. I don't even know what color blue they were supposed to be. I just took one of the blues around them. So. Um, and then I decided to do the yellow as opposed to the purple because there is this strip of like yellow and white it's single stitches between the blue and the purple of the bottom and then there's going to be some yellow in the pumpkin so i'll get all the yellow done and then i'll do the purple purple is one of my favorite colors so i'm going to save it for last so that i enjoy it before i get to the back stitch monster because that's going to be a monster it's going to be a monster let's be real and we had a little bit of a fight, Cinderella and I. I stitched the first couple of stitches up here, and I stitched this gap part wrong. So I had to unstitch just like 10 stitches, 10 stitches. The thread got stuck in some stitching, in some fabric, in some thread behind it, and did not want to come out. Half an hour. It took me half an hour to unpick it. Unpicked 10 stitches. That's how I feel right now. Cinderella and I were not getting along as of Thursday. I didn't even stitch on Friday. I was so mad at her. We was not friends. <laughs> so I did get actually quite a bit of progress done on this gal. So all I have left to do is the grass. The, gra the, the grass down here, there's a little bit of gray in her bucket, which I saved for the end because the gray is also what you outline it with. Remember, that's what she's going to look like. And I thought, I'll have a fully finished object for y'all this week. Because I stitched a lot on her during the week. Um, while I was, you know, didn't have kids coming. You know, my classroom was empty. Waiting for kids to come in. Um, if all of my babies are asleep at once, I stitch a little bit. Granted, I get like maybe... A dozen stitches in when my babies are sleeping because it's very rare that they're all sleeping in at once. But um, between some downtime waiting I had, I got a lot done. I thought I will have a fully finished object because Saturday I was going to stitch while I was sitting at the market and it was going to be great and it was going to be done. Saturday morning we packed up to go to the market and I went, okay, grab my cross stitch bag. Left my cross stitch bag at work. So she is not fully finished next week because like I said really all that's left is this green bit down here and I know I will have a little bit of time at some point to finish it so let me grab my box of finishes so I can show you some other finishes that I have My mess. It's not too bad back there. <laughs> this one is horrible. I'm sure I'm not the only person with a crafting that is like holy cow craft explosions. <laughs> so I will show you these two. I will show you these two. This is a Mill Hill. Butterfly kids. Um, 
it's, I mean, I guess it's fully finished. It's supposed to be a magnet. I didn't put the magnet on it. I really don't know why. And now I can't find the magnet. I don't know what I did with it. I'm gonna have to go buy a new one. <laughs> My life. I'm gonna have to go buy a new one. And maybe make it into a magnet. I have this idea for finishing my other pieces. So this is one of my other finishes that I've done in the last, I think I did this last year. No, I did this in 2016. It is a stack of turtles. I love turtles. Turtles are my thing. Everybody sends me turtle stuff because I love turtles. I'm gonna show you this too. I didn't make this. My friend Andrea made this. This is a recipe card holder. It says kiss the cook. She adhered this with, I don't know what she actually used. I lied, I do know what she used. She used an ATG gun. She used a Scotch ATG gun. But it holds recipe cards. So those are some finishes that I have. But I'm thinking to display my finishes. So Priscilla over at Priscilla and Chelsea wraps her, she wraps her and Chelsea's stitches in sticky board, or wraps it around sticky board, in sticky board, that made no sense. Wraps her stitches, their stitching around sticky board, and then they have several that they have magnets on the back of because they have like metal stands that they put them on. So I'm thinking, what can I do so that I can, and then change out their stitching, what they're displaying, and I thought, I have a lot of stuff in here. I don't necessarily have a lot of well, I do have a lot of space to display my stitching, but when we move, I may not because we are cutting our square footage in half, minimum in half. We are going from over 2,000 square feet to and to 2,000 square feet, maybe under. Like I want a much smaller house, so I need to come up with a creative idea to display my stitching that isn't going to have wall-to-wall -wall stitching, even though that would be probably pretty cool. I don't know that my husband would go for it. And I don't think my mother would care for it. Not that my mother lives in my house, but my mother's in my house a lot. And when she doesn't care for something, she tells me. But, so my idea is to sort of take Priscilla's idea, but instead of using a metal easel, I have um, a burlap canvas that I can get and use that and put two magnets almost like a needle minder. I had a needle minder sitting there. Almost like the needle minder concept. So the needle minder you have the magnet on the back and then you have a separate magnet. And they go around your stitching. You have a magnet in the back and then you have the pretty part on the front. This is one of my needle minders. It's Tiana. You haven't seen her yet. I'm going to go dig out my needle minders and start showing them to you. So my thought was to kind of do it like that with um, maybe some bigger pieces, making sure I have, you know, plenty of, you know, enough magnets on the back so that, and then the magnets don't have to be mounted to the burlap. They can move around. We're going to try that as soon as I get to the hardware store, to the store where the hardware store in Wellington sells the canvases. They're Darice. She, um, the lady that runs the paint department has a lot of crafty stuff in there too, which I think is really nice because Wellington is like a solid half an hour from most places that have craft stores. I give her a lot of credit because she gets some pretty nice crafty stuff in. And a lot of it does work with the paint, painting aspect. But that's my plan. I will let you know how it works when I get the stuff. So, what gadgets do I have to show you today? So, what gadgets do I have to show you today? Well, let me show you my gadget today. I think it's actually dead. It needs charged. This little light I got off Amazon. I will link it. So, this is the top. It sits like... It is a clip. It's a nice little clip. It's a clip. It does attached to my um, Q-snap. I just turned it on. It'll 
I'll sit up here and make you snap. And it's it's a pretty can't really see the light effect on camera, but it's a touch. If I can touch it in the right place. But it is a touch. It's got three settings. That's kind of a low setting. Medium and high. Uh, you can kind of get the idea. Um, but it wiggles. It clips onto my stitching. And this flat base actually sits. They're mowing across the street. I hope you can't hear that. I had to close my window in my craft room because the neighbor kids were hollering and making all kinds of noise. They're kids. It's summer. They're outside playing. Like, I'm not going to object. But I didn't want noise filtered. So, um, let's see if I can angle this down without making a mess. Whoa, that's an awful angle. So it sits on my table like that. That was a pretty angle. So I can use it too when I am paper crafting because I can fold it pretty flat and still have space to work under if it's sitting, you know, on the desk. Just to give me some extra light. You know, I have an overhead light. You can kind of see it with the fan. Um, there is a little light next to the table, something extra. This is nice because it's portable and it doesn't require a cord or batteries. It's rechargeable. I don't know where the charging cord is. I am a hot mess today. Holy cow. Why am I filming a video? I don't know where anything is. It's got a little charging cord. Um, if you've got one of those, you know, those USB hub charging boxes, it doesn't come with a USB hub charging box. I just plugged it into the one that's for my tablet and it worked. You can charge it on your computer, but your computer, you know, all I have is a laptop, so it would have to keep my laptop running while it charges. And it does take a little bit of time to charge, but you get four hours, if I remember correctly from the instructions, you get four hours on the brightest setting. And you probably aren't going to need the brightest setting. To stitch. I, it depends on, I mean it's not an op light, let's be honest. It's not an op light. It's nowhere near that. I think this thing cost me 13 bucks. But I've been stitching in natural lighting with normal house lighting my entire stitching time. You know, I'm kind of used to it. I will just work on something else to be honest um but i'm hoping this helps i'm really hoping it helps with maybe some lighting issues that i run into occasionally we will see it's portable too so i can take it places like if i go on a car trip to see my brother that's great so that's what i have for you this week and we are already at 30 minutes almost. Holy cow. And most of that is me going, I don't know what I'm doing today. I really don't. So if this is your first video you're seeing, stick around, watch my other videos, subscribe, like the video, let me know what you think. I am going to post a few other, um, there's a hair on my phone. I thought it was on my face. <laughs> I'm going to post a few other things that I do on my YouTube channel. Um, if you're just interested in floss tube, stick around for the floss tube. They'll be weekly on Wednesdays. If you're a continuing subscriber, thank you again for joining me. You guys have a great week. I will see you 4th of July. Enjoy, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye!